Morning, Kim Hammer, Pastor Slim Baptist Church Down Tall with your morning devotion. Uh, let me say first of all, I broke my glasses yesterday, so things may look a little different for today. I'll be back to somewhat normal tomorrow, so bear with me today. Book of Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 tells about a man named Abram. We refer to him as Abraham because his name later changes, but for the events of today, his name is Abram because that's what he was called when you look at his family lineage beginning in chapter 11, about halfway through and getting to where we start today, chapter 12 and verse 1. And when we pick up, we find that God has given Abram a pretty tall order. He told him that he wanted him to leave his country, to leave his people, to leave his father's household, and that God wanted him to go to a land that he would show him. Now, we get an insight as to Abram's relationship with God because there's no indication that Abram questioned God. It's just that in faith, he picked up everything that belonged to him that he was supposed to take with him and left. This means that he left everything that gave him a sense of security. That's a, that's a tall order for God to ask us to do, to leave everything that gives us a sense of security. But in that time that God does ask us to do those things from time to time in life, it's so that we'll make sure that our dependency is not upon what we've accumulated, but our dependency is upon what the Lord has given to us in our life uh, that is not accounted for in the monetary things, but is accounted for in the spiritual things. The second thing we notice is that he's going to a new starting place in life. And God knew that Abram needed to separate himself from everything that meant anything to him so that Abram would get totally dependent upon God and that he would be in a position that he had no other choice but to trust God. I believe that God does that in our lives sometimes today. I think he removes us from a secure place and puts us into what we in the flesh may feel is a very high level of insecurity but that, those are the times that our faith grows the most when we find ourselves that we're not able to reach out and to touch and lean on the things that we have accumulated, but we have to lean on the Lord and trust in Him and be able to know that if He promised to do something for us, then we have to build our trust in God that He will eventually fulfill that promise. Speaking of which, if you look at verse 2, God gave him a promise. He said, I'm going to make you something great. And he mentions two specific things that he's going to make Abraham, sorry, Abram great in his life. He's going to make him a great nation, and he's going to make him a great name. And we know the great nation is the nation of Israel, and Israel is a great nation today. They're an ally to many people around the world. They're also bitter enemies and hated by many people around the world. But God says, I'll bless those that bless Israel. I'll curse those that curse Israel. So I'm glad that we're on the blessing side of things. And the reason we get the blessing is because God blessed Abram, who God said, I'll use you to make a great nation. And today we see the evidence of that great nation. And today, as a nation living in America, we get the blessing because of our relationship with Israel. But then he went on, he said, I'll make you a great name. What is it that made Abram a great name? It wasn't all the stuff, because he left all the stuff behind. It was because of his spiritual relationship with the Lord that his name was great. Some people's eyes, that may not mean very much. In fact, it may be a liability instead of a credibility. But in God's eyes, where it really matters, God blessed Abram and he made his name great. Our goal in life should share in the likeness of Abram that we want God to bless us and do everything that would be worthy of God using our names and making them great, not so that we can be great, but so that we can testify to what a great God we serve, just like the song says. Abram packed up and he took everything with him. He did take one extra piece of luggage that he wasn't supposed to take, his nephew Lot. But what's interesting is that when you get over chapter 13 and verse 8, after Abram and Lot, they've been blessed. God fulfilled his blessing, his promise, and they had accumulated great wealth and they had accumulated great herds. And the, uh, uh, the shepherds of Lot and the shepherds of Abram were in contention for the same land to feed the flocks on. Abram said to Lot, hey, let's not fight. There's plenty, there's plenty for everybody, but we're going to have to go our separate ways. And yet in that scripture, Lot referred to him not as his nephew, but he referred to him as his brother because their relationship had grown. And so even though Abram took Lot with him, which was violating what God said do, God still used it for a blessing and ultimately, as we'll see in just a minute, God was able to use Abram to go and rescue Lot 
and make a strong statement in the land where Abram would exist. And so they part their ways. Lot goes toward the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, and we know what happens to them later in the Bible. We'll talk about that sometime down the road. And yet we find that after Lot got there, there's a big uh, turmoil between the kings of the land. Lot gets taken away. Abraham gets word of it that Lot had been you know, taken hostage. And, and here's what's impressive to me. The Bible says that Abram, with 318 of his chosen warriors, went out and they defeated kingdoms with 318 of Abram's choice fighters. And they got Lot back and got all the possessions back. And when Abram came back to the land, the king of the land said, let me do something for you. I want to give you something. I want to be able to, you know, express my appreciation to you. And this is what I close on today. In chapter 14, verse 22, But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I've raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, creator of the heaven and earth, have taken an oath. I've often wondered when you're standing in the courthouse and you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God, if maybe it doesn't trace back to this, but that's just a side note, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or a thong on the sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men with me. Let them have their share. One thing that Abram, I think, is a strong reflection of the quality that he possessed was he didn't want to put himself in a position to be owing to anybody but to God. And he had an opportunity to rob God of some of his glory in this moment simply by taking some of the credit for what had been done. But when you go back to what I said a while ago, with just a little over 300, he was able to go out and defeat kingdoms and defeat other kings. Abram knew that that was not something he did of his own strength. That was something he did because of his strong faith in God. And that's a point we need to remember. Whatever we do, whatever counts, let's not rob God of the glory. Let's remember it's not because of our strength but it's always going to be because of our faith and our strength in our relationship with God who wants to bless us today. So live strong so he can bless you.